Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle, the podcast. I am the host, the Honey Badger, here to give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business, as well as other things. And in today's episode, I am going to talk about frame failure slash frame flex. But first, I have some breaking news out of uh, Indiana and Chicago that I really need to share with you. Because whether you're buying a new RV or you're selling your current one, this is very important to know, okay? So I'm going to link all three uh, links to the articles in the description of this episode so you guys can read them later. But the first one is that Newmar, which is one of my, what well, was one of my favorite motorhome manufacturers, okay, is rebranding one of their products. They're eliminating the Country Star and they're changing it to the Northern Star, okay? And this is important because the rebranding of products has started. This is something I kind of have been talking about on and off for the last six months, that eventually the bigger factories were going to absorb the smaller ones under the same mothership umbrella, okay? Okay. Like, for example, there are rumors and strictly rumors that Coachman RV is going to get absorbed by the mothership and basically be just Forest River. Go through an entire rebranding. Okay. Uh, and, and it's because the Coachman product is not selling on the open market like it had five years ago. Okay. Everybody sold during COVID, but we're talking about like. When I took Coachman Freedom Express into the 2018 Pomona show, I had 10 units there and we sold 38 in 10 days. It was a hot product, really well built. It still is really well built, but there's been a big slowdown in dealerships buying the product to resell it. So when you have that kind of thing start happening, you have to start thinking about rebranding so you don't lose market share. So this is something that's going to happen across the board. But this is a sign of the times. Same with the fact that Winnebago lost a little over $12 million. If I remember right, close to $13 million for a quarter two of this fiscal year. Now, the news will tell you they made over $105 million in profit. They didn't. That was gross. That was before taxes, before insurance, before investor stuff, before paying debt. They lost close to $13 million for quarter number two. Which, by the way, is very important when we start talking about frame flex and frame failure. You'll see where I'm going with that in a little bit. If you haven't already, and I know Pete already knows where I'm going with that one. I know Lisa already knows where I'm going with that one. But we'll get into it in a minute. Okay. Now. The last thing is that Marcus Limonis, the CEO of Camping World, sold almost 20% of his stock. I think it was 100,000 shares for $2.5 million. Now, this is important because it is a signal. Whether whatever, whatever it is, it's a signal that Marcus Limonis feels that his stock value is going to go down for the rest of the year, if not into next year. So it kind of feels like a cash out, like, okay, I need to keep some shares because I have loans or you know debt attached to those shares, like a lot of CEOs and business owners have of publicly traded companies, okay? So it's like, I better cash out now while I'm getting top dollar. So that all signals because the forecast that everybody had on the wholesale side, on the corporate RV dealership side, all pointed to 2024 being a rebound year. And it's worse than last year. We're already on pace to lose 25% total market share of RVs 
combined between Canada and the United States here in 2024. And here's one of the biggest reasons why. And it's not interest rates. And it's not prices. And it's not the economy. Those may be affecting some people's, obviously some folks' decision making. But here is something from the dealership perspective. We lost 35% of our deals because we're not getting the trade-ins. When we have a really good year, close to 40% of the deals we make have some sort of trade-in, and then we resell the trade. Okay? We're not getting those deals. Now, there are three main reasons why. The first reason is on the dealerships. Okay? Now, this is not going to cover the majority of dealers. This will probably cover a small portion of them. But there are real idiots out there. Okay? And I love the idiots because I get to grab their customers and go, piss off, dude. I know how to get these people out of their trade with very little cash. But most of the time, a finance guy or desk guy will look and say, wow, the guy's 25000 upside down and I've got five grand down. That's too hard. That's too much. They'll never get done. I mean, that's how they that's how they act. Right? They want the low hanging fruit. All right. Now that doesn't represent the majority. That re represents the minority of people that work at dealerships, but it is a reason. Okay. The second reason is is what I call the guy who says to me. A RV or anything is worth what a person's willing to pay. It's the guy that walks in to the dealership and wants to be offended by what I'm going to give him for his trade-in. These type of people walk into the dealership and go, you, you say, hey, how much are you looking to get out of it? What were you hoping to get out of it? I don't know. You tell me. Or they say the words, you ask them, hey, do you have a balance on it or do you have the title? I don't know. You tell me type of reaction okay those folks are never satisfied with what you're going to give them for their trade okay that's the second but the most common reason why we are losing out on people is because the misunderstanding of things okay so here's a great example this is not with covid units this is with people that bought before covid okay guy walks in 2017 flagstaff travel trailer Paid $29,000 for it brand new. Talked about all kinds of stuff, right? We had a great conversation. I say, great. Here's what the bank says they'll lend on your coach. Oh, you're so full of crap. You're not going to make 20 grand on me. What do you mean 20 grand, sir? I, I, I can only get $15,000 financed on your travel trailer. See? And I even showed him the math. Oh, no, you're going to get like 40 for it. 40, I'm going to get $40,000 when I can buy a brand new one for thirty nine. I'm selling you the new one that's a little bit longer, a little more equipment to it for thirty nine grand. But you want forty for the one that's eight years old. Well, yeah, that's what they're going for online. Really? He says, yeah. So I Google it. He's absolutely right. There are people across the United States and up into Canada that are literally listing units like it's still COVID-19. I'm not joking with you. So this guy literally thought I was ripping him off because he thought I was going to list it for $40,000 and make 20, 20 plus grand off of him. So, and, and I'm not going to bash the guy. I understand. Like, he doesn't know any better. So I sent him the math and I said, hey, look, I'll consign it for whatever number you want. It's a free piece of inventory for me. Okay. There are a lot of people that are going by what things are listed for, not what the true value is. So I've talked about this a lot. I'm going to give you a real quick look at it. There's a retail value that we all can see for free 
and there's the lending value that dealers and banks have to pay access for. You have to have a dealer license or a lending institution license in order to access that book. You have to have a comp basically you have to have an RV dealership or boat or power sports dealership to access that book. Okay. And that's what we call lending. Just like with KBB, when it comes to automobiles, there's what we can see for free and there's what the banks lend on. Two different books, two different values. So it can get very confusing. Okay. Here's to simplify it. Stop looking at what things are listed for. Stop adding the options on JD Power because the majority of lenders don't let you do that. And I've had people call me a liar on that, but Let's see, I've been doing this 15 years, so obviously I've done a lot more RV loans than most people, okay? Now, take what the average retail and the high retail are without adding anything, and that will give you a range of what your RV is really worth. Doesn't matter what you added to it. You could have put 6,000 6, 6, watts of solar and a big inverter. The bank doesn't care, okay? You care, the customer that's buying cares, but the bank doesn't, okay? Now, let me go one step further. I haven't gone yet. 2008, 2009 kind of ruined that because Wells Fargo and a few other banks back in the early days, the 2000s, late 90s, let you add every single option so you could get these big bookouts. And then what happened to 08, 09, and 10? People let go of their RVs and surrendered them. And banks were out millions, tens of millions of dollars, just in RV loans. Probably hundreds of millions, if I'm being really honest about it, right? That might be sarcastic or a little, a little exaggerated, but they lost a bunch of money. And then on top of that, people were living in them and... Banks were trying to repossess something somebody was living in, which had to go through eviction laws. So banks are very careful about how they lend and how much they lend on a used RV. Okay. And that's why the super majority of lenders don't let you add the options, unlike a car. Now, the reason why they let you do it on a car is because you can put a tracking device on the car. You can repossess the car because no one's, well, it's not considered a domicile. It doesn't have a toilet and a shower. Okay. So there has to be, it's a toy, not a need. Okay. Now, let's segue into some context here. Okay. So first off, I want to answer some uh, emails and some comments I got, okay? So there are people that were concerned that I'm picking on All About RVs, a uh, gentleman named Jared, okay? I'm not picking on him, okay? I just want to make that flat out. I'm not picking on the guy, okay? I just don't like fluff, okay? I, 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 got, I talked to a guy that knows me pretty well, works at a dealership in the middle central part of the United States. And he watched several of my podcast videos on the whole frame failure thing. Okay. And he said to me something very interesting. He goes, you know, what's really interesting that ever since you started talking about this around November, December of 2023, all of a sudden you started seeing these bigger corporate YouTubers you know, start doing videos about it. And he said, it's like almost as if he said, it's just a perspective and an optic sync, but it seems like these bigger YouTubers, whether they're affiliated with a manufacturer, whether they're affiliated with like eTrailer.com that sells Lippert parts, or whether they're a part of a big corporate RV dealership, or whether they're just an independent it seems like these guys with large followings that either own a Grand Design fifth wheel or affiliated somehow with it are really trying to deflect blame off Grand Design. Okay, so the reason why I did that video in the reaction video or any reaction video that I do is because to me, I want to make sure that the fluff is taken out. 
I want to expose the fluff because a puff piece is not helpful to anyone doing their research. Okay. I want to give Jared a lot of credit. I think the DIY part, the do-it-yourself part that he talked about would be very helpful to someone buying a used fifth wheel of any brand especially if it's 8, 10, 12 years old, I think his little invention with the plate and the way he was talking about the lag bolts and the way he was talking about what he was doing to do preventative maintenance, fabulous. Excellent content. But to say things and make insinuations is not the right way to go. To say that I called a bunch of manufacturers and they didn't even know what FrameFlex was, there's got to be context in there because I'm not going to give people's names. I'm going to keep their lives private. They're not sources. It's just I'm not going to give you every name of every person I talk to at Forest River, Coachman, Primetime, Keystone, Jayco. They're just warranty people. Regular Joe Blows that go to work for an hourly paycheck and go home to their families. Okay, they're not they're not my contacts. So I'm just going to respect them and give them their privacy. And they've all told me that they are very aware of frame failure and frame flex. Now, I didn't get a hold of KZ. I didn't get a hold of Winnebago and I didn't get a hold of Rev Group. So maybe that's who he's talking about. Or maybe my last thought, if you watch the entire episode I did yesterday, my final thought about it was, or maybe he's turning the knife slowly into grand design. Maybe that was meant for grand design. I don't know. Because I don't know the guy. But we don't need fluff. We don't need puff pieces. Okay, we have enough of that with Big Truck, Big RV. We have enough of that with Matt's RV reviews. We have enough of that with other large corporate RV nerds. Okay, we have enough of that already. We need hard, factual truth, but we also do not need extreme. But it seems like extreme is what is necessary anymore. Okay. That brings me into a thought I had. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, if, if you haven't seen it, there's a great interview with Pete West uh, with a guy named Chris on Why Wait. Fabulous. I have a couple of disagreements with Chris about a couple things. But for the most part, they're knit knack picky things. But the majority of that video, the super majority of that video, was the kind of stuff we really need. The difference I feel between Chris and Jared is Chris is a little more, yeah, he's going to be a little politically correct because that's the kind of, it seems like his personality. But he also isn't going to do a fluff piece or a puff piece, or whatever you want to call it. He's going to get down to the heart and soul of whatever the problem is, whatever the problem may be. Jared, again, from the optics of things, doesn't mean it's true, just the optics of how it looks, looks like his video is, let me tell you why it may be, it's probably your fault as the customer, and grand design isn't the problem. That's how it looked. I own a Grand Design Reflection. I'm not affiliated with these guys. Chris didn't even have to say any of that. You see the difference? See the optics problem? Okay. So I hope you guys understand that. Like, I'm not attacking anybody. I simply want to give you guys information, okay? The second thing I really want to cover before I get into Chris and Pete's thing is... I got a thing from a gentleman, sent me a great email. I love the email. The email was very direct and very thoughtful and very thought out. I'm not going to read the whole thing because that's unfair to him. Because, But I'm going to cut it down to this. 
he told me that what I'm doing is getting everybody nowhere. <clears throat> it's getting no closer to a recall that I'm that all you want is views, all you're after is money, blah, blah, blah. That was the short of it, okay? Short version of the long email. My response to that is, there's a hard truth. And the hard truth is, is there will never be a recall. It is virtually improbable that it's going to happen on a mass scale. Because Winnebago is hemorrhaging money. <clears throat> if you read through their entire quarter two, they are not doing good as a company. So there's a lot of silence. And when a company is not doing well financially, they're going to do everything in their power not to bleed out more money. Now, that's an opinion. That's not a fact. <clears throat> Pardon me. But it's an opinion based on information that is public knowledge. Okay. The other thing we have to really, so we have to look at is, and, and, and if you, I'm also going to link the interview Pete and Chris did. Okay. First off, yes, and I've said this over and over again, Grand Design is not the only manufacturer that's having this issue. I am pretty close to a thousand people that have reached out to me about some sort of frame problem with their fifth wheel. And the overwhelming majority of you are Grand Design Solitude, and Grand Design Momentum owners. And then the overwhelming number of you folks <clears throat> have told me that Grand Design has pretty much told you to pound sand, allegedly. So, ale so the allegations against Grand Design RV are far more productive dominant in the market than the other manufacturers combined. The other big difference is how they handle it. Enjoy the life dot journey. Tom owned a Columbus fifth wheel, had frame failure, Forest River reacted, fixed the problem. I have five people I'm in contact with that own either a Jayco or a Keystone Montana that are in the middle of getting a range to go back to the factory to have it fixed. Not, no non-disclosure agreement. They're not being asked to sign an NDA. They're not being asked to, to take down their YouTube channel or take down a post on Facebook or take down shit on Instagram. They're not being asked to do any of that. Tom still posts about the Columbus fifth wheel. Does Forest River sue him over that? No. Why? Because there's a difference. Okay. So I disagree with the fact that, oh, it's all their manufacturers too. Let's be real. Grand design, everybody keeps saying, is taking the brunt of the heat. No. No. It is predominantly between two brands of fifth wheels. Grand Design Solitude, Grand Design Momentum, 2014 since its inception to 2024 year models. 10 years that these fifth wheels have been built and 10 years of problems. Predominantly and allegedly. Now, you can call the people that reach out to me liars if you want. You can call me a liar if you want. That's fine. But I want you guys to think about this for a second. Just, just imagine this for a minute. Okay, You have Jayco, Keystone, Forest River, 
Lance, Redwood, Mobile Suites, all these brands of fifth wheels that are not asking customers to sign a non-disclosure agreement and fixing their rig. Now, let me add a little asterisk next to that. It doesn't mean they're perfect. I'm going to make that very clear right now. There are some things I wish they would jump on better and do a better job of, okay? Specifically Forest River and Keystone. But their reaction is a lot quicker, and they're not asking people to take down their YouTube videos, take down their social media, any of that. So when I question people's integrity because they got bought out of their old fifth wheel, whether it's a momentum or a solitude, they got fully bought out, then they not, not three, four days later go and buy another grand design product after all the non-disclosure agreements, after all the bullshit they've put people through, yes, I have a right to question your integrity. But the other half of me says, good for you. Do what you got to do for your family. If Grand Design paid your down payment for your next rig and bought you out of your fifth wheel and you had to remove all your social media to do that and you had a bunch of money invested, do what you got to do for your family. I understand. But you've lost all integrity with me. Period. And that's not a personal attack against one person or two people. That goes for everybody. Now, getting back into Chris and Pete, okay? The other thing I don't, that needed to be said, but I think there was a, and again, this is not a critique. This is more like, I think there was not enough time to fit it in. Winnebago bought Grand Design in 2016. Okay. Grand Design or Winnebago, I'm sorry, Winnebago was probably pretty close to the worst trailer, fifth wheel, and toy hauler manufacturer. They were garbage. Built an they built an amazing motorhome. They built an awesome motorhome. They built pieces of shit. Pieces of fucking shit trailer, fifth wheel, and toy hauler. They were terrible. That's because they're not Winnebago's. Okay. Towable and motorized are two separate divisions under an umbrella. They are run in two separate manners. Winnebago Motorhomes, almost close to what? 65, 70% of what's put into a Winnebago Motorhome is built and manufactured by people at the Winnebago factory. The fucking towable department assembles them from shit they get from vendors, just like almost every other manufacturer. But they built them like crap. They were terrible. So then they go acquire Grand Design RV, which was supposed to be the prestige of the industry, and they went from last in market share to first. But you're still run by a portion of a good organization that builds a crappy product. Okay. The last thing that really was missing, and I appreciated Pete not using my name, but I'm the dealer that turned away the Grand Design fifth wheels. Okay. Now, I have a momentum here, a used one, that I took in on consignment. It's a 2017. I've had it checked for frame failure, and so far it has not had it. But I took that on consignment back before I found out all about this. And I took an Imagine in on consignment before all this was occurring, before I even had knowledge of this. And I have not sold them because they're overpriced, number one. And number two, they need work. But... This is going to be hard for you guys to hear, and I'm sorry, especially if you're a grand design owner. Two weeks ago, I had a customer walk in with a 
um, 397th momentum. Gorgeous. Okay. The book value on it was like 55 grand. That's how much I could probably roughly get financed on it. And the guy wanted to either sell it or consign it. And I told him no. I said, if I sold it, if I take, if I take it from you, I'm going to send it to the auction. And he asked me why. And I said, because of the frame failure problems Grand Design's having right now. I don't want the liability. So I offered him $20,000. I said, look, I'll give you an offer. It's a low ball, crappy offer, but it's probably what I can get at the auction for it. And that's probably 20 grand. So I'm the guy that said it. And he said, well, will you consign it? No, because I will not and refuse to resell a solitude or momentum to an unsuspecting customer. And the hardest truth, guys, is dealerships across the United States and Canada watch my podcast. And I'm a part of a couple of groups that of dealers that talk to each other. And it's a silent thing. We're not going to talk about it openly. I'm probably the only guy that will talk about it openly. But dealerships across the country want nothing to do with solitude or momentum fifth wheels on trade or consignment unless we absolutely can make sure we can send it to the auction and get out of it. So Don Clark, in his infinite wisdom, with all the allegations and all the speculation, has not addressed this. And now, not only is it hurting people that have frame failure and frame flex, but it's going to hurt the grand design owners that don't. Because if you bought something for $120,000, $130,000 two or three years ago, you're not going to like what dealers are going to take it on trade for. And you're losing massive value daily. As long as Grand Design stays quiet, has people allegedly signing non-disclosure agreements, allegedly buying people off, allegedly doing this stuff, dealers are not going to forget these things. And it's going to hurt the Grand Design used market at dealerships. I have a guy that's a dealer friend of mine that he took in and trade and bought at auction a few of these solitudes and momentums. And then he called, he didn't talk to me before he did it. He then watched two of my videos and went, oh shit, I'm going to lose my ass. He ha he's he he's debating with himself whether to open up a can of worms and open up these fifth wheels or send them back to the auction. And he's leaning towards sending them back to the auction. He'll take his beating and move on. How sad is that, guys? How sad is it that dealerships, they're going to be quiet. They're not going to say anything. They're going to keep it on the low. This is costing, this is getting, not only, not only is this costing people tens of thousands of dollars in repairs, not only is it causing people headaches, not only is it causing people stress beyond belief, but now it's hurting customers' pocketbooks. So for those of you that are thinking about either rebuying another grand design or you're getting into the market and thinking about buying a grand design product. This is not a personal attack against you. This is simply a fact. The minute you buy another grand design pro product, you have now become a part of the problem. That's a fact. Because as long as you're filling up their bank accounts, 
at Grand Design, this will never be publicly addressed. And we don't need any more fucking puff pieces by big YouTubers. We don't need them anymore. We need real people like Chris at Why Wait, like Pete West. We need real people that are have their boots on the ground and not trying to be balanced or politically correct. All the allegations, all the speculation needs to be hit hard. And here's my promise to all of you. I will never stop talking about it. They can't buy me off and they can't shut me up. Period. I don't give a fuck. Because number one, I know I cannot get it anywhere near in front of somebody on a federal level to get it all recalled and all that shit. It'll never happen. But as long as we keep the information going, as long as we as a community keep talking about it, it will never die. And that's my promise. You may not like me for it. You might hate me for it. You might really think I'm a piece of shit. And that's okay. But I'm still going to give the information so everybody in the entire United States of Canada, whether they buy a product or they don't buy one, have all the information so they are well informed and can never say, I didn't know. Until next time, have a good one.